Hello folks and welcome back to the Movie Mad channel once again. Today I'm going to start filming part of shelf 18 of my complete Blu-ray collection. As I said previously, I haven't filmed the back of shelf 17 and the reason I haven't done that is there's 250 titles back there, maybe even 300, that have actually decased and I've put them into these poly pocket type things and the reason I've done that is mainly for space. I've decased movies that I've thought that maybe I haven't watched or maybe I was thinking about getting rid of but I hadn't watched them yet or there's a reason I've decased them and rather than getting rid of them I've saved myself a lot of space by doing this and if I you know get round to the movie and I do decide that it's a good movie and I want it back in my collection, then I can always just add the case back in. I'll tell you what, I'll get one as an example and I'll show you what I mean. I am still here, I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> Let's just grab, I'm just grabbing a random one from the back of the shelf. I've got one now and I'm returning. Right, so this is what I'm talking about. I've got these uh, poly pocket cases that I got off Amazon. You think you get 50 for about £13. And you can still keep your you know your slip cover. This is probably a bad example because I folded that one really badly. Right. You fold it nicely, a bit nicer than that, and let's see it. You can then put it back in if you get take the movie and decide that you're going to watch it. I haven't seen Apollo 18, doesn't mean I don't want to watch it. I just, you know, I've got a busy life, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, do kids, job, lots of running about. Uh, so, so I always think. I'm going to get to these movies eventually, and I probably will. Maybe even th think things in my life are a bit quiet. But I really want to get rid of it and send it off to somewhere where I might not be able to get it again because of the demise of physical media, so much stuff going out of print and things like that. So I've got these. I could probably do with DKs in another 50 or so, uh, to be honest with you. And I probably will. But that's what we've got. So we'll be going through the shelf, but I'll have to do these you know, like this because pulling them out like that from the shelf isn't going to be good so we're just going to move on to shelf 18 I'm going to put the intro in now and then we'll be back with shelf 18 part 1 So here we are with shelf 18 part 1. I'm going to say I'm just going to do the front of this shelf because if we don't otherwise the video will be I think quite a long, long video. And you know what that's not a bad thing sometimes. In fact my throat's rather dry I'm going to pause for a second I'm going to get myself a cup of tea and then I'm going to come back. Cup of tea not a sponsor. <laughs> Well, that was a bit longer break than I anticipated. Sorry about that, folks. My stand's wobbling. Still wobbling. There we go. That's fine. So let's talk about the movies on shelf number 18. We're starting off with a movie that I spoke about recently. That I got from CEX for 50p. Now, <coughs> excuse me. I haven't returned it yet. Because I said I was going to return some of the 50p movies that I didn't like and didn't want. 
But this one I actually do want, but according to my database, it's in my shelf, so it might must be in those poly pockets. But I don't know if it's got this nice lenticular slip in the poly pockets. So I've kept it for now. And but if I've obviously got a double, it will be it will be returned it will be returned. What else have we got? I think I must be on a dodgy floorboard here or something. Let's move over a bit so that doesn't happen. Still, because that never mind. Right, so next we have a movie that Roy sent me recently. I haven't got to watching it. He said that it is uh, a good movie, and uh, this despite the, the the name, it's the Guernsey Literally and Potato Peel Society, and it is one of the producers of the best exotic marigold hotel. I haven't watched the first one of that yet, and I haven't even lost that in watching the second. So we'll need to uh, get on to that. Let's see. Too many movies, not enough time in the day. Next we have They Shall Not Grow Old. Again, as was said to me, but I've not had a chance to watch it yet, but looks intriguing. I keep walking over here because I'm putting them down so I can uh, so I can just lift the next one off. That's that's the, the thing when you've, you've got limited space. This shelf was my very first shelf and I have filled it to the gunnels. It is absolutely stacked. What have we got next? This media book of The Graduate. Go and see X. This is a great, actually a decent movie. Comes from Mrs. No, uh, the song Mrs. Robinson comes from that, doesn't it? Which is featured in a few movies since American Pie. And it's a nice one. To be honest with you, though, I'd actually prefer the standard release. If I could replace it with the standard release, I probably would. Or would I? Maybe I wouldn't. As you can see, the CEX sticker didn't do great work well on that one. Next, we have a movie that I bought as a media book. And I still haven't watched, but it looks like it's supposed to be an absolute classic. Again, I should get on to that. Too many times. And again, it's a nice media book. To Kill a Mockingbird with Gregory Peck. This shelf at the front, there's a lot of movies I haven't watched. But there's a lot I also have. This is another one I haven't watched. Bruce Lee and Dragon. We then go on to this one here. Sometimes we see X's stuck together. This one, I got this one. I think I, yeah, I got it in the charity shop. I think I paid a pound for it. And it's Drift the Invisible. Why did I buy that? I've never watched it. Never seen it. I see, initially when I was collecting, I did buy everything. And it was... Uh, I'd, I'd only start, I actually started getting Blu-rays in 2016, which is quite late. My very first one was a double of Harry Potter. Uh, and I didn't have a Blu-ray player. My gran very kindly... When I went to Asda, I purchased a Sony Blu-ray player for me with Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. And I already had the Harry Potter one, which I was using. Well, so no, I didn't even have anything to play it yet. So that was my uh, first Blu-ray player, and I've still got it. It's in the cupboard, and I'm keeping that one, that's for sure. It's a Sony one, it's a decent one. Next, I have Harvey Keitel in Bad Lieutenant. Great movie, this one. Yeah, it's really nasty, isn't it? The remake with Nicolas Cage isn't too bad either. You should watch them back to back one time and see which one I think is the best. What one do you think is the best? There we go. Next one is The Double with Richard Gere and... I can't remember his name. It says Martin Sheen in it. Topia Grace. That's not him. I've seen this, but it was a long... I'm pretty sure I have seen this, but it was a long time ago. I think Roy sent this to me, because so it was very good. I'm really sorry if I'm getting who sent these to me wrong, because my memory is not the greatest. We then have this one, which I know Roy sent to me, because he, did, he I don't think he liked it as much as I do, but it's uh, Moonfall with uh, Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson and George Bradley. And I actually find this one really watchable. I've watched it several times. I think it's a great movie. 
when I say great, is it a great cinematic masterpiece? No. Is it one that you can sit down, switch off your brain, watch and enjoy? It certainly is. I find that a lot with Roland Emmerich's films. Absolutely great. Really enjoy that one. Really glad Roy sent me that. Uh, picked this up in the charity shop. It was a Christmas movie, and I think it was a pound or two. I don't know. It was Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. And what te- te- sort of tempted me to it, it looks like it's a really old Blu-ray, you know? A lot of the 2000 Blu-rays are going out of print at the moment. When was this made? Or ones that were released in the 2000s are going out of print. But I haven't watched this one yet. Roy also sent me this one, I think, which is a simple favour. I'm pretty sure that I've heard of that, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty good. But I've not watched it yet. There's a lot of movies that are out there that I probably should have watched and I'm missing out on. And I will get round to them eventually. But the uh, not enough hours in the day. And sometimes when it's late at night, I can't concentrate on a new movie. So I put on something that's familiar. <laughs> we then have The Eagle with Channing Tatum and Jamie Bell. It's actually a pretty decent movie. I like it. I actually spoke to a guy that worked on the set of that and he said it was filmed in the middle of nowhere and it was a trek to get to all the locations. Rio 2, 3D Blu-ray digital. Do I really need that one in my collection? I don't know, the kids watch, the kids might want to watch it, but a nice release. I got it for Pinland, it was £2. But I'm going to... Really start to be thinking about my collection and my space now. So I've got to make some decisions. This one was definitely staying in the collection. I haven't opened it in this one, but it's a great movie. Vital Birage. What is it? Can you recognise from the three people who it is? Or what it is? It's Unlawful Entry. Just make sure this has got English on it. It does. That's a decent invasion movie. It reminds me of Pacific Heights. I don't think Pacific Heights has got a Blu-ray either, has it? We then go into the classic. Goodfellas. I'm really surprised that Joe Pesci's not in front of that one. Nice release with a media book. What do we have next? This one I got out of a charity shop. It was for £2, I think, and I thought if it's a BFI one, I'll take it. Still haven't watched it. This is from the makers of Greg Gagliotis Girl. Dual format edition. The Sinking Feeling. Not got to it yet. I think we'll have to move the camera a little bit, are we? My big finger in the way. There we go. Another one I've not watched yet. Night in the City. What are we getting to next? Roy will not be impressed with me. The Deer Hunter. This is Roy's favourite movie, is it? Or it's Josie's favourite movie, but he really likes this one. Uh, that's Roy from Blue Roy Movies. I have seen this, I'm sure, but it was a long time ago, and I, I don't remember anything more about it. Out of that pile, it could take me... If I was actually just to go through that pile that I've put over, over this other side here, uh, it'd probably take me two or three weeks just to get through the movies I've not seen. A movie I have seen and I regretted not having in my collection for another long time. <laughs> Hilarious movie. Joe Pe- Pesci, Ralph Maggio, Man- Ma- Ma- Marissa Tomney, My Cousin Vinny. What a movie that is. <laughs> I love the bit with the grits. And how long does it take you to make your grits when any other self-respecting one takes 20 minutes and you've done it in five? <laughs> did Ronan Enermanich direct this one? I'm not sure if he did or not. Follow up to Independence Day. Now, I have this in 4K. You know, it's not the best movie. It's a, it's, it's, if you're going to watch one, I do like to watch the second one after that. 
Uh, but I've also got the 4K, because if you're going to watch it, you may as well watch it in 4K. But this one's also got the 3D in it. But do I really need all this addition? I should just take the 3D disc out of this one and put it into the 4K, and then that will give me a bit of space. Another Dustin Hoffman movie that I've not got to see yet. The Little Big Man. Here we go. Jodie Foster. We'll just be talking about that. Out of print. Flight Plan. Great movie. Really enjoyable. And I got a Facebook market post deal where the, the lady was selling the Blu-rays for £2 each and a lot of them traded in really well to CEX, like a Jaws Steelbook, a few other things. So, and, but get, I got all like for £14 postage and I traded it all into, it somebody on to CEX and I got £31. And I was going to trade this one in, in the pile as well, but I've never seen it. You know, Luke Besson, the, the movie that, you know, I like Leon. Subway, I don't like. Well, I like this one, I don't know. And this traded in for a bit, but I thought I could at least watch it first before I traded it in. That's Angela A. Better move the camera a bit more. Here we are. Oh, it's a wee bit short. Short. Let's see if we can move this up a bit. There we go. War Pigs. That's actually a really good movie. I enjoy it. Seth Rogen. Is that who it is? No, Jonah Hill. Oh, no, no. This isn't the one I thought it was. It's War Dogs. I was thinking it. I haven't actually seen this. And this is War Pigs with Dolph Lundgren. See, this is one I haven't watched yet. This one I could decase and put into the, the slips at the top. I definitely could do that. A movie that has... So much historical inaccuracies that Larry was speaking to me about it. And I do enjoy this movie, but after I spoke to Larry about it, I was thinking about getting the 4K and I didn't get the 4K. And the reason I didn't is he's right. I know it's all fun and everything like that, but the historical inaccuracies in this, taking the credit away from the British soldiers that, or the British sailors that captured the Enigma machine and making out that it was American, America that done it. There's, all, there's actually quite a bit of that in uh, Masters there. Again, a nice series, but there's a little bit of uh, America the Saviour in it there. So I decided when I wasn't going to upgrade that to 4K, I'm not going to get rid of the Blu-ray, I am going to keep it, but I also got the DVD of it, which I put in there, which I've had for a long time. But I didn't I didn't think about that at the time, when I was watching this movie. Maybe I didn't think too much about it, but that is a bit of a disrespect to the British sailors, and I don't want to do that. Next one, this was in one of the 50, in one of the 50p Blu-rays. Uh, well, I said the cheapest Blu-rays in CX. Will it be going back to CX? Not yet watched it, but it's just sitting on the shelf there at the top because I had a bit of space. These are other ones that I got in the Mega Charity Shop haul, and I just moved them to the shelf, I say, just now because there was a bit of space there, and that's The Children of the Corn, The Fablemans, and The Last Rifleman. They will be getting watched because then they trade in for some significant value. And if I don't like them, then I'll trade them in. And if I do, even if I do like them and I'm not going to watch them for some time, I'll trade them in and I'll maybe get them back later. We then have Senna. Triple play. Haven't watched that yet either. I've watched this and everybody hates this one. I can't remember that much about it for it to be that terrible. So that's Door of the Dark World. Then we have... The original director's cut of The Wild Bunch. Seen it before, but not for a long time. So that's the top of that first half of that part. I'll see what I mean. Still got the front part to go through. And uh, if I was to go through the back and the top of, the other, uh, of this one, then we would be here for quite some time. 
And if I add the next part into the playlist, it'll be directly after this. So if you do want to watch it all at once, then you'll be able to do so. Just plugging my phone into the charger because it's running, running out. Now, as I was saying, I do have some order to my collecting. You, you might not see it. A lot of people might not see it. And it's not throughout the collection. This part at the front definitely has a logic to it. So we're moving back across here. Just so we can see a bit better. Oh. By the way, that cable's from a surround sound system. I really should get it up higher and around the ceiling, but it's supposed to be up there. But we'll, fi we'll, fi we'll fix that up another day. So here we are. We just need to see this part. Let's uh, put it up a wee bit there so we can see. So we start off with Mad Max. Decent movie. Bit of the end is brutal, as you know. You can cut through the steel in, in, in 10 minutes, but you can cut through your ankle in five. Boom. <laughs> Out of the Mad Max movies, this one's my favourite, The Road Warrior. I think that's the best one. I will upgrade these eventually too. Uh, be Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Everybody didn't like Well, I keep saying everybody, but I did get a lot of... Uh, hate that one, I don't know what to say when it came out because I was too small when it came out to be worried about that, but I think I think they're all good, it's a really really good trilogy one that I sent me and I really enjoy as well and that's Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt and What Women Want you can hear the thoughts of women, imagine <laughs> not watch this, should have watched this it's Mel Gibson and the Patriot my dad and mum went to see this in the cinema and they came back and went, Jesus, that's exactly what they said. The Passion of the Christ. We Were Soldiers, another great movie. Vietnam War movie. Of the Airborne Cavalry, based on a true story. Yeah, that's great. You shall never take, you basically take my life, but you shall never take my freedom. Good. Oh, enjoyed that. Enjoy that movie, yep. As you know, I would do, I'm Scottish, you know. Maverick, Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster and James Garner. Not seen it for a while, but I thought it was a very good movie as well. So got a lot, uh, this bit starts to get a lot of good stuff. Maybe because this is all Mel Gibson and I do like him. As he, uh... Actor. Mel Gibson and Payback, again another good one. Conspiracy 3D, one of my favourites, with Julia Roberts. So that makes it that makes a difference too. We then have got How I Spent My Summer Vacation, one I've not watched yet. Picked this up from Amazon Germany, and it's Mel Gibson, and it's The Man Without a Face. Again, another good movie for, of his. Actually, should check that that has actually got. English, it does. it does. This has obviously been attached to the Amazon box. <laughs> you still got a bit of cardboard on it. Another. A lot of people didn't like this one, but I did. Edge of Darkness. And this last one is another Mel Gibson movie. It's an early Mel Gibson movie, and I've not watched it yet. With Sissy Spacek, and it's The River. This is a fun movie, too. Bird on the Wire with Goldie Hawn and Mel Gibson. Now, we're going to get into a huge bit here of movies I've not seen. And I'm going to tell you why I have most of these movies. Indicator often do really, really good sales. And a lot of their stuff, when it's in the 3 for 15, there's a sale going on until Monday. Uh, right now, in the 3 for 15, you could trade CX for more money. And what I've done with that is that I bought three, traded three, got the vouchers, but I probably bought six and kept a copy of each one that I bought so that I could watch it. And I haven't got a lot around to watching a lot of these yet. 
but I will do. And they didn't, they didn't cost me very much because of the way I was doing it. I've seen some vampires I've seen. Got that one from the CXL. This was from the Amazon Glitch Day. Sinbad, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Let's move the camera, but you can't see that, can you? Let's move a bit over here so you can see that a bit better. Let's turn. There we go. Oh, it's slipping. There we go. That's a bit better from this angle. Is that, or is that too far away for you? Tell me if that's close enough for you to see all the goodies. The Golden Voyage of Sinbad got that in Amazon Glitch Day for £2. I was going to trade it, but then I thought, again, I might watch that. I'll keep it. Stone Killer. Charles Bronson, do like him. See, not watched it. The Eyes of Laura Mars. I've been told this is a really good film, but again, not got to it yet. And that traded in for a great price. I think it was like, it was £5 and you got 13 for it. So, there you go. Same with this one. Uh... Comanche Station, The Gorgon, Framed, Buchanan Rides Her Own Way, Randolph Scott again, Decision at Sundown, Roy sent me this one, and this is what I really wanted to watch, I keep saying this over and over, I need to make more time, but you know, they're sitting here, I can watch them anytime I want, hopefully I'm going to live long enough to watch most of my movies. I hope so anyway. Next, we have one that Roy sent me, which I wanted to see, which is uh, directed by Cindy Pollack, which is Burt Lancaster and Castle Keep. I have watched this one that Larry sent me, and it's the wrong box. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't like it. <laughs> it's a bit Monty Python. For me, and I, I'm I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't like that particular style of humour. I know a lot of people do it and we're subjective, but I just didn't like it. But you know, taste change. We'll see. The China Syndrome. Picked that one up because I had the uh, German copy, and I actually I actually really really enjoy this movie. So it's, as Roy said, I'm a, I, I'm a, I, you should maybe call me Apocalypse Boy or something like that because I do like movies that feature the end of the world and dystopian futures and things like that. And this one's a sort of disaster of what's going to happen in a nuclear meltdown or something is going to happen in a nuclear meltdown. And I had the general release and I've seen this in the CX, so I thought, why not upgrade to the indicator version? And I did. So I really do enjoy that one. This one again was a good trade at some point. So I kept one for myself and traded a couple. Hussy wasn't. This is a one I actually wanted to watch. And I've not got round to yet. And I've seen that in the CX. The limited edition uh, version. With Helen Mirren and John O'Shea. Happy birthday to me. Again it was one of these ones where you could, I could get a decent return on it and I could add it to my collection. Same with 10 Real in Place but this is supposed to be really good and I've had this for a while and I should get on to it. We then have Blue Collar, a nice cop movie and I got it because it's got Richard Pryor in it and Harvey Cattell and uh, they're good actors and I really enjoy Richard, well I might not say Richard Pryor's a good actor or whatever but I like him and I like, I like a few of it. I like some of his movies, I like Superman 3 I like Brewster's Millions. Uh, what's that? Here, no evil, see no evil. I need, I need to get that on, Blu-ray, if you can get that on, Blu-ray. Uh, there we go. So, next, I've got another Charles Bronson one from CX, Breakout. I have watched that, but I can't remember much about it. This one... <laughs> Larry, Larry said to me, if I go into CX dressed as James Bond, because I was going on about I wanted to get this, he said, if you go into CX dressed in your tuxedo, because I have a tuxedo because I have to go a night out, as you, and buy a James Bond movie, I'll get you them. And I was like, that sounds like fun, so let's do it. And he actually, uh, and as Larry does, he delivered the, uh, uh, got me it, and I've watched that. I actually like the remake, but 
indicator version of Midnight Way, and I, I've got this one. I don't know why I've not watched it yet. Grey Lady Down. Always wanted to see it because I'm a Charlton Heston fan. I just haven't got it on, put it on yet. But it's here. It's ready for me to do that when I want to. Next one, Virgin Shoulders. Again, that was a good trade-in. Take a girl like you. Same. Psych. 69. These are all limited editions. Town on trial. Then we have another couple. The numbers aren't all in order here, are they? Kermit's supposed to not be happy with that. <laughs> uh, Bellman and True. I got that because of this guy. He's in Game of Thrones and there's a lot of other stuff and I like him, so I thought, why not have that one? And next, not least an indicator. Again, I think this was on NCX for a good deal and i seen it had Jeff Bridges in it and I took it and it is Winter Kills. Again, the limited edition one. Let's move over just slightly so we can see the end of the shelf. We are coming to the end, folks. I'm at the end of my cup of tea as well, by the looks of it. That was a decent cup of tea. All good. Just what you need. I found this in the charity shop for £2. The Jabberwocky with Terry Gilm. I've he I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard this is more uh, Monty Python stuff, and if it is, I don't think I'm going to keep it. I've got Clute. Actually, I didn't find that in the charity shop. I got that one in CX, sorry. It's this one I found in the charity shop for £2, which is Robin Williams and Jeff Bridges in The Fisher King. I haven't watched it yet. This one I got in CX. Cary Grant, Gene Arthur, Only Angels Have Wings. This one is The Blob. Is this the one with Paul Newman in it? Or Steve McQueen? Which one is it? Is it that one? And I got this on a great deal on Amazon one day. I think it was like £8, which was a great deal. So I took it. And this last one, uh, I think Roy sent me to add to the Criterion collection. That's my only Criterion 6. I've got one more on another shelf somewhere. Maybe I'm just not a boutique movie kind of guy. I'm a more moonfall, disaster movie type of guy. But there you go. Oh, and here we go. My wife hates it when I put this movie on. She absolutely hates it. But I watch it over and over again. And it's Richard Pryor and John Candy and Brewster Millions. Brewster's Millions. That's actually a, a favourite of mine. Really, really enjoy it. And since I'm a Richard Pryor fan, this was in the CX and I didn't, hadn't seen it yet and I still haven't. But it is car wash. Right, so, out of all these movies, start putting them back up here, these ones. I'll have to take them down next week when I do the next video. Oops, when I do the next video anyway. Out of all these movies and all these shelves, And all, not all these shelves, all these movies and all that, that thing. How many movies is that? I'm not quite sure. Maybe a hundred and something. Which one? If I had to only take one for the rest of my life. My taste is terrible. You know, well, is it because I think it would have to be Brewster's Millions. Well, there's my cousin Vinny. Oh, God. Jesus, conspiracy theory. Oh, such a hard choice on this shelf for me. Midway. That's a tough one. This moment in time. I'm sorry if everybody hates me, but it's Brewster's Millions. It's, it's just a movie I've watched over and over again the most. There's some really good stuff on this shelf, though. So, hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Hope you've stuck with me. And if you have, go made it to the end of the video. What's your favourite? Thanks, guys. And I'll catch you next time. 
If you are liking the videos, do do that. Do do that. It helps the channel. Comment because that also helps. And if you do want to subscribe, I would appreciate that. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.